Let me fix this camera, this phone. It was a little off. All right, so right here you'll see my laptop. Um, welcome and welcome back to everybody, all my family members. I'm so excited to see y'all again, tea babies. Yes, my tea babies. Um, what are we doing today? Well, we were gonna make some juice, but I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Today I wanna do a quick cook with me. Um, Sunday I had to taste for lo mein and yeah, I was like, let me go ahead and try to make it. And so, mm, child, I made it the way that the recipe called for. And I threw it right in the trash. Why? Because it called for way too much sesame oil. That is the strongest oil. So I'm going to try a different lo mein recipe today. And I wanted some honey walnut shrimp from Panda Express but it was cold yesterday. And on top of that, I didn't wanna go spend the money on it. So I figured, hmm, I'd go to the store and get my own honey, my own walnuts, my own shrimp and make it, I found a copycat recipe. So I'm excited about that. So I'm gonna do some lo mein, honey walnut shrimp, and I'm gonna try a new wine today. This is a white wine. It is called Espiral. Vinho Verde, it's a white wine, Portugal. It's a Portuguese wine, Portugal. Um, it's a white wine from Portugal. It is 9% alcohol by volume, which means it's probably gonna be sweet because the less, less. Why, I, can, I can't talk today. The lower <laughs> the alcohol content typically means the sweeter the wine. So let's taste this wine and see. That, I was gonna say, so, um, pro tip, you don't have to turn your cap. You can turn the neck and it loosens the cap right off there for you. And look at that. It just popped it for you. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something. So this wine, it smells sweet. Um, this one I saw on Instagram from one of the summer, um, sommeliers that I follow. And she's doing a, what is it called? snacks and wine pairing couch couch snacks and wine pairings or something like that but she does a lot of trader joe's wines so when i went to trader joe's there were a couple of her wine set recommendations that i wanted but they were out of them so when i saw her video on this one the um young lady that was over in the wine aisle i asked her about this wine she's like oh i like that one it's pretty good so i picked this one up and we're gonna see what it's like what it's gonna be like um i figure it would go well with um what I'm cooking tonight and y'all pardon me if my head is cut off I'm on a different tripod because my other one broke and so I want you guys to be able to see the counter as well as me be able to talk to you so the the um, height um, situation is not the best oh and we're gonna make our own homemade tempura batter it'll be my first time so yeah it's a real pretty it's like a straw color it smells like green apples and pineapples. All them apples. Yeah, it smells very tropical, extremely tropical. So the wine, I tasted it while I had to take a quick little um, commercial break. First of all, I'm pleasantly surprised by this wine because it is not sweet, right? It's like, it's um it has a hint of sweetness but it's mostly tart so i'm extremely surprised by this wine i mean when i tell y'all i'm surprised i'm buying vino verde i'm buying her again honey yes i am buying her again because she is good so it's very tart 
It has the Granny Smith apple flavor to it, um, taste flavor, whatever you want to call it. And kiwi. I'm getting kiwi and Granny Smith apple. Oh my gosh, she's a good one. She is a good one. Um, so I would definitely buy this again. For sure. All right, so let me clean my hands. First thing we're gonna do is make this tempura. Let's pour up another little swig of this here. Vino Verde. Verde! I'm gonna sit her right there. Need a bowl. You need some flour. You need an egg, water, and that's it. I threw my sifter away because it rusted out, so I need a new sifter. I'm gonna create a little um, wish list on Amazon and add some things to it that I need and want. So I am going to first get my flour, one cup of all-purpose flour. I used to have a scoop in my flour. I don't know where it went. So we're gonna go ahead and use this, um, we're gonna use this rice cup that we don't use when I scoop out rice because I barely scoop out rice. I normally do the 10 minute bag rice on it. All right, so we need one cup of flour. So let's get that in here, wrong way. And this is my favorite measuring cup from um, Pinterest. Lord, y'all see what's on my mind because my recipe is on Pinterest. And I'm gonna tag, I'm gonna tag, Lord, I can't talk today. I'm going to link the recipes that I'm using in the description uh, so y'all can see it. But this is my favorite Pampered Chef measuring cup because it's good for dry. And then if you use, flip it, you can use it for liquids. All right, so it's one cup of all-purpose flour. I probably don't need all of that. Oh, actually I do. Did I tell y'all my baby turns 22 this week? She'll be 22 Friday. I'm just like, what? How did this happen so fast? All right, you need to make sure it's sifted. I'm gonna use this um, strainer, which is gonna be, it's gonna serve as a sifter. Anyway, let's go ahead and start getting this flour in because, and you can see how fine it is when it comes out through your, um, through this, sip, this uh, strainer. It's just like using a sifter. So that's another little tip. You can, um, if you don't have a strainer, I mean a sifter, use a strainer and I'm gonna bring it closer so that you can see how fine it comes out. It's almost like powdered sugar. And you can see that the lumps are still in the top. So it says to sift your flour really well. And that's what we're doing. And I'm gonna show you, you can actually see that see the lumps and it's gonna end up coming out really fine. And it, it just shook all of those lumps up. No more lumps and look how fine it is. And let's get the rest of this flour in here. I should probably have some music on, huh? No, because if I turn on music, then I'll put some out add some music on my own because I don't want I don't want to get any copyrights. So there's that. Now we're gonna add water. And see you flip it up this way, just straight straight up for your liquids. And yes, I am using tap water. I am going to use one cup of water and it called and you have to add ice cubes to it too much I want to make sure I have these in this uh, measurements just right because it's my first time making it and I don't want to mess up all right so it says you have to use cold water and it actually says put ice in it to make it cold so I'm adding ice to make it cold now who did never mind I already know this ice tray drives me nuts. This is another one of my Tupperware ice tray, I mean, Tupperware products. I like the ice tray because it has little bubbles on the bottom, but if you don't pop them out, it makes it hard. You should leave them this way. That way you can pop them and let me show y'all. I know y'all don't care about this, but when you do that, you saw it move, 
it allows the ice to pop out easier. So I try to make sure that when I fill the ice tray, all the bubbles are the right way. All right, so let me get, um, get my egg because I need an egg to go in this. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna let my water sit for a while. That way the ice can go ahead and like kind of ch change the temperature of it. But in the meantime, I'm going to, in a bowl, it says to beat one large egg until the yolk and whites are just barely incorporated. So we're gonna try to do that. All right. Get us a dishcloth out so we can have something to wipe our fingers on. Okay, let's let that over there. And it says until they are just barely incorporated. I would say that that's just barely incorporated. What y'all think? Because to, ooh, I don't like that. Mm -mm, that little, that little embryo looking piece. That looks disgusting to me. Put that right in that shell. It was on my finger. That is a slight snot. I know that was disgusting, but sorry. All right, so that's that. Now it says, once you beat the egg, combine water and ice cubes in a cup, which we've done. And it says you should have one cup of cold water. All right, so should I pour some of that out? Okay, that's a cup. It says one cup of water and ice cubes. All right, now using a strainer, pour the water into, oh, into the bowl with the egg. Girl, I was about to make a mess. Using a strainer, pour we got a smaller one. All right, baby strainer. Pour the water in. Probably should've got a larger bowl. Cause I thought that, the, I didn't think the um, egg was going into this. I should've read the instructions. All right, now it says, do not add ice cubes to the tempura batter, okay. All right. Oh, I know why. Okay, I need another bowl because I have to add, the flour is gonna be poured into the other stuff. So let's pour, yeah. Let's go ahead and pour this in here. Ew, it looks disgusting. This is gonna be interesting. I hope it comes out all right. Cause I really have had the taste for that. Let's get that out of there. All right. Next, at the okay, do stir this a little, uh, gently stir that a little bit. Okay. Now it says add the sifted flour to the egg water mixture and stir it using chopsticks. Girl, and it says, be careful not to over mix the batter. It should be slightly lumpy. Here we go. All right, it says gently pour it in and gently stir. So I'm gently pouring it and gently stirring it. Oh, wait, am I? doing this right all right we can just pour like that and let's stir it like that I don't I don't get the whole chopstick stirring situation but I mean whoever got this re made this recipe I'm pretty sure they know what they're doing so <sighs> okay it's taking longer to make it too important than it's taking to do anything else all right so all the flour is in here and now we are gently stirring. Okay, my color looks like it does on the, on the computer. I was stuttering. I think this is gently, is this gently stirring? What y'all think? 
I want to make sure I incorporate all the flour though. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. All right. Okay, so. Oh, I see the bubbles. I see the lumps. This is exciting. Yep, they got lumps and they have bubbles in this picture. It's on the website is called Spru the Spruce Eats, but I'm gonna link it, like I said, um, in the description box. So that if you choose to make this, you can follow along. With the video or without the video. Hopefully with the video. My camera just got dark. My screen on my phone rather just got dark. I don't know what I don't know why my phone does that. Okay, so am I allowed to do that? And it says it'll have some lumps, right? Yep, it should be a little lumpy. All right, so now let's sit this over to the side. And now let's move on to making the, um, doing the shrimp situation, all right? Okay, so now let's see. Place the walnuts in a saucepan with water and sugar. Okay, so we're gonna need a saucepan a saucepan but this is what we're going to use because we got a whole cup of walnuts that we got to use so let's wipe this off because we're going to sit this up here all right so it calls for one cup of walnut halves i should have did this on a weekend let me get a measuring cup because i don't put that one in the sink okay cup of walnuts Up walnuts. I love walnuts. And I need a cup of sugar. I don't need my glasses to see TV. I need something on. Just share my mind right now, honey. Ooh, I reached all over the place. You need to be on this recipe. Hopefully my TV's not too loud. So it says one cup of walnut, one cup of water. So it says place the walnuts in a saucepan, water. Dang it, I need some sugar. I gotta get three fourths cup of sugar. Hold on one second. All right, I'm back. So I had to go get some sugar and I have my sugar here. Tupperware. Y'all know Tupperware still be coming through in the clutch, honey. All right, so this is, look, I meant Tupperware. Yeah, that is Tupperware. This is Pamper Chef, though. That's three-fourths cup of sugar, and it says to add the sugar to the walnuts. Then I got to put it on the stove top and cook it. So while this cooks, I'm going to cut up the vegetables. I'm going to season the shrimp, and then I'm going to cut up the vegetables. I am creating a mountain of dishes right now. And I really like to wash as I go. But I feel like um, I don't want to hold y'all too long. All right, so let's see what your, um, let me check on this here shrimp. All right. So I need to cook it until it begins to brown, until the sugar starts to brown. Okay, so guess what happened? My phone said, yo, you got too much stuff on here. You need to delete some of this stuff. So I had to just go clean my phone off. I'm so tired of this. I am going to get a camera, okay? And I know I'm still gonna have that issue, but at least I can control it more when I'm working with a camera. So, you know. As I was saying before, I so was so rudely interrupted by my phone. Um, I gotta cook some rice too. Um, my husband wants rice. I don't. Um, they don't have their shrimp season. Y'all know I'm not doing no plain shrimp. I'm about to season these things up. I don't know if you can see the steam, but it is boiling. And then once this, once this, um, I guess caramelizes, then I need to take it out of the pan and put it on parchment paper and on a baking sheet. And I have a sheet in the uh, pan in the oven warming. The um, 
walnuts have to go on this and they have to go in the oven. I should have did this on the weekend. I'm doing this during the week. It's a lot. It is 7-12 and I gotta still take my shower and read and everything. Get in the bed for work tomorrow. I like the sound of that back there though. Ooh, you hear that? I know y'all can't. It's boiling real good. Oh, I see the sugar starting to caramelize. So it said that the sugar will start to turn brown and I can see the sugar getting that caramel color. I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer. This is exciting. This recipe says, go ahead and put the walnuts on this baking sheet and put it in the, um, oven for 20 to 20 to 25 minutes walnuts should not be touching fix the tempura which we've already done dip the shrimp into the tempura batter ain't no seasoning on them yet and they have they don't call for those seasonings yeah we're not doing that we're gonna put some seasoning on this shrimp all right so i'm just gonna do something very light though i'm not gonna um, overdo it because I don't want to lose the taste of the um, the shrimp. Oh, I got to make a sauce. That's the that's the honey sauce. Okay, so the sauce is honey, sweetened condensed milk, lemon juice, and mayonnaise. So I need to get a lemon, and I need some mayo, and I need to get some condensed milk. All right, but in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and grab just a few seasonings for the shrimp. We'll keep it mild, mildly seasoned. And on the shrimp, we're gonna do onion powder, garlic powder, Old Bay, and crushed red pepper. That's all I'm gonna put on the shrimp. I'm not gonna overdo it because the recipe don't even call for any seasoning at all, but y'all know I just can't handle plain shrimp. And the batter is just, flour, egg, and water. So there's no sugar, no seasoning to the batter. So let me get the walnuts off and bring those over here, lay them on this tray. I probably could have used a smaller one, but y'all hold tight. I don't know if you can see, but it's almost like it's a syrup. You know what, I'm just gonna take the phone. I'm scared to take the phone off because I, I like where it's sitting right now. Oh, you know what, I can do it like this. So this is when they say, watch the sugar turn brown. Can you see it has that caramelized look? Probably can't see that. Oh, I hate that y'all can't see it. I know what I can do. Since I'm not gonna use this syrup anymore, cause you don't use it anyway for anything, cause I have to get the shrimp out. I mean the walnuts out. I need to be taking a, a commercial break and washing these doggone dishes. And I'm gonna do that because I can't stand to have stuff all in the sink while I'm cleaning. Cause I need a clean space to work in. All right, so let's see. I bet this is good. This is kind of almost like wet walnuts from like back in the day when I used to get wet walnuts on my ice cream. I bet that tastes good. I'm gonna taste it too. But look. That's the sugar and water. So it said to let it turn brown and I'm not gonna eat this because that egg was in that. I just thought about that. Set myself all up for failure. All right, so one second. I need to clean this mess up that I just made. Cause that's syrupy, syrupy almost. And I don't want that to stick to the counter. Yeah, next time I have this genius idea, I'm gonna have this genius idea during the week. I mean, during the weekend. All right, now let's go ahead and scoop these shrimp out. I mean, I keep saying shrimp. Um, walnuts, we're scooping walnuts out, not shrimp. And after this, I'm gonna take a quick break and season the shrimp, and then I'm gonna wash these dishes up. But it said, make sure the walnuts are not touching and just put them on a baking sheet. And you can line the baking sheet, it says, with foil or parchment paper. I like parchment paper um, a lot. I like using parchment paper. 
and I'm gonna taste this. I got, I got a feeling this is gonna be tasty and it will be good on some vanilla ice cream. So we're gonna taste this in a second. Okay, okay. I got a good feeling about this, y'all. Now let's taste this. And remember, it's one cup of walnuts, one cup of water, and three fourths cups of sugar. I'm pouring this in the jar. Mmm, that's good. We're about to put that in the oven. Ooh, I want to eat one of this walnuts. I'm going to pour that on top of some vanilla ice cream. I'm going to eat a walnut. Okay. I know, now know how to make my own wet walnuts. Oh my God. Oh my goodness, that is some kind of good. And I only need to drizzle a little bit on a little bit of this. I'm too excited. I only need to drizzle a little bit of that on top of my vanilla ice cream. Ah! I've cut up my mushrooms. I added some peas in here. I got a whole mushroom in here. But I have the shrimp that are already sitting in the tempura. I had actually taken y'all over there and set the camera up, but it's getting late, so I need to um I'm gonna have to cook the shrimp over here. I got my water on for my, I have my water on for my lo mein. Did I just throw my knife in the sink? I sure did. See, I'm off kilter now. So, I'm just getting the um, vegetables ready for my lo mein real quick. Hope my phone battery doesn't die, but as I just told my daughter, try not to let people push your buttons and push you in a direction where you typically don't go because it's not worth it. All right, so I have cut up my um, mushrooms. I'm, I always cut the, the very tips off of my scallions and stuff, and I'm, I'm not gonna dry these seeds because I have so many pepper seeds that I don't know what to do with. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut these scallions for my lo mein. <clears throat> I have my lo mein noodles, my, the water for my lo mein noodles boiling already. And I have my, my oil heating up for the tempura, for the shrimp tempura. And the shrimp are actually sitting in the batter right now. Now one thing I noticed while I was talking to my daughter it looked like the batter was thinning out, but I didn't want to add any additional flour to it just because I didn't want to mess it up by chance because, you know, it's my first time making it. So, all right, so I got my scallions in here. I got my mushrooms in here. Next, I'm going to add my peppers and some spinach. So I'm going to just um, cut my peppers up. And you know, until in Lo Mein, the peppers are normally um, small pieces. So I'm gonna just cut these into strips and then I'm gonna do a rough chop on them. We're just gonna do a quick rough chop. It's so late. Like I normally would have had dinner by now, but I didn't start cooking until late. So, I mean, what do you expect? You don't start cooking dinner until late. So you're gonna eat a late dinner. I need to do some editing. Um, and I may not edit tonight. I might just get up in the morning and do some editing. And then after I eat and take my shower and stuff, I might just, I might go upstairs to do some reading. I'm gonna add some fresh ginger also. And I am adding all this spinach because you know this is gonna end up being like a third of a cup. <laughs> I don't know why spinach does that, man. It drives me nuts. I like the stems on spinach, so my lo mein is going to have spinach, the whole spinach um, leaf and stem chopped up in it. So I'm taking those off though because they look raggedy. Some of these stems, I don't like the way they look. And like I said, I'm just doing a rough chop because really, most people put um, Chinese cabbage in their lo mein, either Chinese cabbage or bok choy. 
but I'm opting for uh, spinach because I love spinach. And like I said, I'm not gonna cut it too small because it's already gonna shrivel up anyway. My lo mein noodles are done. Oh, wait a minute. Mm -mm. Let me drain them. Hold on. I need to actually drain them and put them in cold water. This has been the craziest evening that I've had in a very long time. Very long time. So my walnuts. And now I'm going to go ahead and heat up the oil for the shrimp. I'm going to do two tablespoons of vegetable oil for sauteing. I'm going to use some of this with my vegetable oil and I'm gonna add all of the vegetables to the pan but first I'm gonna put in some garlic and ginger I would bring y'all over here but it's nowhere to stand you up and hold on I might be able to figure something out all right so I have my pan on I'm getting ready to add my oil here and I'm gonna add in my garlic and my ginger. So we're gonna go in with a tablespoon of the fire oil. Let me turn my heat down because I don't want my pan to burn and I don't want my oil to burn. And then we're gonna go in with olive oil. It says you can use olive oil or um, vegetable oil. I'm gonna use olive oil. I wonder what it would taste like with grapeseed oil. All right, so that's my oil. And I know at some point I'm gonna to have to put some sesame oil in here. That's my ginger. Now let's get some garlic. Good, but I'm just letting the, gar the ginger cook. And I'm gonna add about a good tablespoon of garlic. All right. Now comes the fun part. Adding all the vegetables. Shrimp is in the batter, in the tempura, and I'm going to go ahead and start dropping that in the oil because the oil is hot. Alright, there's the tempura. I just have some broccoli back there cooking. But that's getting cooked up nicely and the vegetables for the lo mein are cooking up really nicely. All right, so here are some of the shrimp. They're nice and golden. I got a little bit of tempura, I don't know about that. Um, but the shrimp came out nice and pretty. So now I'm going to go ahead and make the sauce that I'm gonna use for the lo mein. And I'm debating about the making the sauce for the shrimp, I might just use the same stir fry sauce and drizzle it over the shrimp because honestly, I'm tired and I don't feel like making no more sauce after I make this one. So it's gonna be a surprise to all of us, okay? And here are the cooked vegetables that I'm gonna add my lo mein noodles to. And you can see the garlic, you can see the ginger. It's my kitchen smells amazing right now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and make the sauce um, for the lo mein. And we're gonna go in with some shredded ginger or some um, grated, freshly grated ginger. And we're gonna do about a teaspoon of this. We're gonna go in with a teaspoon of sesame oil. This is the strongest stuff, y'all. Ooh, this stuff is so strong. 
don't even want to put a whole teaspoon, but we're going to go in with two tablespoons of poison. One. Two tablespoons of poison sauce. Then we need a tablespoon of rice vinegar. We have a tablespoon of rice vinegar. And we need two teaspoons of oyster sauce. two teaspoons of oyster sauce. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of onion powder. Since I'm not adding that fresh garlic, I feel like I need to add at least some type of onion and garlic powder. Onion powder, some garlic powder. Let's add a little bit of crushed red pepper. A little bit, that's all I need. A cup, no, a fourth cup of low sodium soy sauce. I should have just taken the cap off, but it works. So we got a fourth cup of that. Slowly stir so that we don't make a huge mess. And I sloshed it anyway. <laughs> because I really don't feel like making the, um the sauce for the shrimp and the walnuts, I'm gonna use this general soap sauce. I'm gonna put the shrimp in a bowl and drizzle some of this on it. And that's just gonna be that. So now that my sauce is ready for my um, lo mein, I'm gonna pop, the, pop this in the pan and I'm gonna add the vegetables and the noodles. All right, so I've added my noodles to the pan, my vegetables and my stir fry sauce that I just made and I'm just mixing it all up. And I'm gonna make sure that I completely incorporate the vegetables into the noodles. And then after this, I will show you guys the shrimp when it's all um, mixed up. But it's, the shrimp is really pretty. That's my first time doing tempura shrimp. And all I have to do now is make the sauce to drizzle. Well, I'm not making it. I'm just gonna heat the um, general so sauce up and add it to the shrimp and um, the walnuts. And I'll probably add a little bit of honey just because I want that honey flavor. And that's gonna be my version mixed with the copycat version of the honey walnut shrimp and the vegetable lo mein but it looks like it's pretty good. I mean, I wish y'all could smell it. It smells amazing. So my phone keeps running out of storage. So hopefully I'll be able to get a good um, picture for you guys or a closing video. But if not, just know that I will be making this again on a weekend. All right. So here is my version of vegetable lo mein and honey walnut shrimp. But remember, I use general soul sauce. Next time I'll actually make it but I heated up the general soy sauce, added the walnuts to it, and just drizzled it over my shrimp. That's my tempura. And I'm gonna clean up my kitchen now and eat and go to bed. Thank y'all for hanging with me tonight on this crazy, crazy cooking video. I wish you nothing but love, peace, and blessings. And I will talk to you guys on the next go around. Check out my shorts. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And bring some more friends on over. We are on the road to 1,000. We are close to getting 600 right now. 600 subscribers, family members, tea babies. And I am pushing for 1,000. So I will talk to you guys soon and good night. I had a dream last night. Did everything.